Um, this next speaker I'm really excited to bring up, Mustache Weekly has called him the best mustachio in all of search engine optimization. Please welcome to the stage, Rand Fishkin. Put your hands together. Well, thanks very kindly. Uh, howdy, gang. Great to see you all. I have an incredible amount to get through in a very short period of time, and I know we're running a slight bit behind, so I'm, I'm going to try and catch up if I can. What I want to do is uh, run through these slides, but make sure that you can get them all. So at that URL, you will be able to find all of these if you want to dig into the data, uh, see all the URLs that I'm going to mention and talk about today. They are on there. Ooh, it's like being at a concert. There's all these phones out, and um, I'm popular. I'm dressed as a Seattle hipster today. I don't know, is, that a, is that okay? I, it's, all right. I, I, I was thinking of wearing my Inigo Montoya costume, but I thought it'd be weird because I had to fly in this morning and like on the plane and what would TSA do and I don't know. So well, a very brief background on me. So I started Moz uh, many years ago initially as a blog and I started the blog because I was really pissed off that Google, despite claiming to be a company that cared deeply about transparency, was not transparent about the most important thing how their search engine rankings work. And you might quibble and say, oh, you know, they have to be uh, opaque about it, but I don't believe in security through obscurity. I think it fails. I think actually Google doesn't believe in it, except this one thing. Um, and so that really pissed me off. I think it, it made for a rise of a huge amount of spam in the SEO world um, and is the cause of SEO's bad reputation because Google just wasn't public about it. And so I resolved that I was gonna, by hook or by crook, make Google more transparent, and make SEO more accessible. Uh, so two of the ways that we do this that I'm gonna talk about today are with opinion data, surveying a bunch of smart people in the field who practice SEO day in and day out um, and are well respected, and through correlation data, which is essentially us grabbing huge numbers of search results and then looking at running uh, regression algorithms and correlations uh, on individual features and data sets. I'll show you what those produce and how they match up and what we can do with them. Uh, all right, let's go right in here and talk about what SEOs have seen over time. So we do this every two years biennially, biennially. There's 2009, 2011, 2013. Not important to worry about what's in the pie chart right now. Just take a look what's happening. Do you see what's happening? It's like a flattening, right? Like, like people are basically saying there's not one overwhelming factor that's controlling everything about what was in Google. Like that, you know, right here, that, that was obviously links, right? That was links pointing at pages. And back when you could like anger text bomb and make George W. Bush's homepage rank number one for a miserable failure, even though on whitehouse.gov, uh, that was links, right? And, and that's gotten a little, little less powerful. So here's 2015, right? And you can see that change continuing, continuing on and on. And if you're interested in, in digging into what's in there, which I do urge you to do if you're interested in SEO, you can check that out. But I think I find this fascinating. And in fact, to me, this, is, this confirms a lot of what I believe and what we see in rankings data as well, which is just that things are not uh, as simplistic as they used to be in Google's algorithm. All right, uh, a few opinions in particular stood out. So let's look at domain level link features. This is like domain authority. This is all the links that would point at your website um, and how authoritative they make it in Google's eyes, right? And we can see 2009, it kind of drops down to the 14, 15% range. Page level, like an individual page and the links that point at that page, kind of same story. Right? And then page level keyword features has stayed relatively flat. This is like the terms and phrases and, and words uh, that you use on your pages also stayed, stayed relatively flat. And, and now they're really similar, really similar, which is sort of what you feel when you're doing SEO these days too. Um, and so, you know, professional SEOs, they're getting this sense that SEO is flattening out. Uh, after years of dominating the rankings, maybe links are feeling like they're not the overwhelming signal that they once were, which is nice. They're still powerful, but, but not as overwhelming. Uh, one thing we did see in the survey, engagement data hugely on the rise, um, meaning that the degree to which people click on your result instead of other people's results, uh, spend time on those pages, don't pogo stick. Pogo sticking is when you uh, perform a, a web search, click on a result, and then go, this isn't what I wanted, and click back and choose something else. That tells Google that result was no good. Um, and so if you're not engaging those searchers, 
eh, you're not going to rank for very long. Uh, let's talk a little about the correlation data. And before I do that, I want to be totally clear. Correlation doesn't imply causation. I think the, the full quote is, but it sure is a strong hint. Uh, correlation data tells us something of great value. Even, even if you believe like, hey, Rand, I don't buy that, that uh, any of the correlation data is causal at all. That's OK. I, I, I'm kind of with you on some of them, actually. Uh, but it doesn't tell us why a page ranks higher than another. Right? Just because some feature has a correlation of you know, 0.35 with higher rankings doesn't tell us why. That doesn't mean that's why it's doing it. That doesn't even mean Google's measuring that thing necessarily. But it does tell us what successful websites are doing that less successful websites are not doing. And I don't know about you, but I care deeply about that. Like when I see, oh, startups that are having success are doing this, and the ones that are having less success are doing that. Uh, pitches that get funded do this, and pitches that don't get funded do that. that. That's super interesting, even if it's not causal. That correlation data is interesting to me. Uh, there's three useful applic applications that, that we like to uh, do with correlation data. One is to be able to debunk statements about what is not happening in the rankings. Because if you say, oh, this is a strong ranking factor for Google, and then it has a negative correlation with rankings, Mm, not so much. We can show relative potential influence. So if you believe like, hey, doing this is going to have a much bigger impact for us than, uh, or a much bigger impact across the web or across Google's ranking algo than this, eh, we can kind of show some of those variations and uh, call that out. And we can identify more fa factors where we can go test it. And we do run a lot, of, uh, a lot of tests, not just at Moz, but as part of several groups that I'm part of. So I'm going to call. Uh, up to the stage with me, um, a royal asshole, someone, someone I'm ashamed to call a fellow American. Um, I figure he didn't get enough stage time the other night, so why not uh, let him join us here? Uh, so uh, the Donald might say something like, uh, Google loses. Right? The more ads you buy, the, the higher they rank you. If you buy more ads, like they'll rank you higher. Well, you know what? Actually, ads are negatively correlated with rankings. So if you believe, oh, Google just ranks stuff that has their advertising blocks on it, nope, that, that's, that's not how it is. Uh, coefficients, we can also use those to show relative correlation, right? So he might say, uh, you just want to repeat your keywords a bunch of times and throw out all these fancy latent Dirichlet allocation models and, and, and those types of things. And we can show, no, that's not the case. In fact, the more sophisticated a language model becomes, and we've developed some moderately sophisticated ones at Moz, the better uh, those correlations tend to perform versus simplistic keyword matching. And I mean, no surprise, right? Like anyone who thinks Google is going, well, let's just use raw TF-IDF like library scientists did in the 60s. That's crazy. Uh, correlation can also lead us to some interesting things that we can validate. So we can say like, oh, People are linking with exact match versus partial match anchor text. Uh, partial match would be like if, if uh, we wanted to rank uh, the White House homepage for miserable failure, we'd point with the exact anchor text miserable failure or with a modified version like um, miserable, low down, no good, fail. Right? A sli slightly modified partial match anchor text. And we can see that for the first time ever uh, in our correlation data, exact match not as well correlated as partial match. So then we went in and ran some experiments um, and actually proved to ourselves that, no, it's not the case that uh, they influence it less. When we pointed exact match, that still moved the needle more on individual rankings. Um, but I think a lot of the time, exact match anchor text is an indication of spam. Like a lot of people who are spammers and manipulating Google do that. So I think that's what's going on there. Uh, but this led us to some good experiments. All right. Uh, one thing to note, when you look at correlation data, you're going to see numbers that are in this range, right? The 0 0.4 to about negative 0.2 or so, which is pretty low correlation if we were talking about a single factor, right? But in a model like Google's, where we have hundreds at least, and I think thousands, of unique inputs, a correlation in this range is to be expected. If we saw something that was like correlated 0.8 with higher Google rankings, we'd go, well, Google's algorithm is not very sophisticated at all, is it? All right. So let's take a look at this data. Uh, you can see the full methodology here, but basically so this is from uh, May of this year. We collected 16,000 uh, unique search results across a bunch of different categories, uh, looked at 
things that predicted higher versus lower rankings. Uh, this is from google.com US. And we did not use uh, import.io to scrape Google. We have, our, we have some other ways to do that. Uh, not to get them in trouble or anything. But uh, this is pretty familiar. Like, if you have seen the correlation data from years past, it, it's basically in the same ranges that it has been. One interesting thing to note, uh, this is around linked data, by the way. One interesting thing to note that we did for the very first time was to compare ourselves against some competitors. So Moz has its own link index called Mozscape. Uh, Ahrefs, which I, I actually highly recommend, they have a great link index. If you're not finding the links you're looking for in Moz, I'd go check them out, or Majestic, they're both good. And you can see here the correlations very, very similar between these different link indices, suggesting that we, we all sort of have a similar representative sample of what's going on. Social shares uh, are actually down from their high of a couple years ago. So social, social shares are slightly less correlated with rankings than they used to be. And I believe Google, when Google says they don't use social share numbers uh, or social share data directly in their uh, rankings, I think that's, I find that credible. Uh, traffic and engagement data, we were hoping, we, we thought we would see some higher numbers here, um, but in fact, it looks to us like the, the, the problem is that we can't get at what I talked about earlier, pogo sticking. We can get at raw bounce rate for websites. Uh, th this is through SimilarWeb, who, if you haven't checked them out, they have an awesome panel of, I think, around 30 million web users. Um, and so they, they basically monitor all the clicks that those people make across the internet. And then they can tell you all sorts of things like, what's your traffic? What's your competitor's traffic? Where do they get their traffic from? Uh, that's great. but. Bounce rate, raw bounce rate, not correlated, not well correlated with uh, higher rankings. I think what would be correlated if we could get at it is pogo sticking, meaning bounce rate specifically from search results. Uh, keyword use and on-page optimization, like I mentioned before, the more sophisticated a model you build, uh, the better those tend to get. And so we've seen some, some record highs in this, but uh, again, I think, I think what we need to do is just get way more sophisticated with our NLP, natural language processing, um, and our ability to collect these kinds of metrics and calculate it. Uh, we also did something unique. We broke down correlations for the very first time by category. So you can see in, in our data uh, some cool things like an individual category, in this case, you know, health versus business and industrial versus dining and nightlife. And the correlations are actually pretty different across these different verticals. So take a look. Health websites that link out more, this is a correlation, the number of external links on a page, so meaning a page that links out to other places on the web, which Google has said is, is kind of a good thing. They, they want you to do that, right? They like it. It doesn't leak page rank. This isn't 2002. Uh, and dining and nightlife, like, they don't really care if restaurants link out. Not they don't care, but it is not the case that restaurant websites who link out tend to rank higher than those who don't. But it is the case that health websites and business and industrial and sports and fitness websites who do link out tend to rank a little better than their competitors. Uh, we can see that, that ex exact match anchor text again that I talked about earlier. There's home and garden, apparel, beauty and professional. And, you know, in, in places like uh, news media and publications and travel and tourism, well, I mean, I would anticipate to see higher as well, and the, and the data backs that up. Uh, document length, so you might have heard like um, BuzzFeed and Upworthy, companies like that, talk about how long form content performs really, really well for them in search results. And uh, yeah, you know what? We see that here too, news media, arts and entertainment, but do you need to have a long website, you know, a long web page describing your restaurant? No, you do not. No correlation, literally zero correlation at all. Same with, same with retailers, right? Suggesting that sort of not as critical. Social shares, this is Twitter and Facebook. Twitter is the, the top one of each set, and then Facebook, the, the bottom one. And you can see again there, uh, very, very similar relative correlations for the two, but Facebook having better coverage, I think showing a little bit uh, stronger in there. All right, so some big takeaways. I, I think correlations um, with links have remained similar, which, which sort of, which a little bit contradicts this idea of flattening, or at least suggests that the picture around links is nuanced, right? That it hasn't, it hasn't changed very much over the years. Links still continue to be a relatively good predictor of how things rank. Um, I think we need more sophisticated on-page analysis. And if we can get it, 
if we can get more sophisticated on-page analysis, we will have the tools to perform, uh, to get better at our rankings in Google. And I think whatever company that is, whether it's Moz or somebody else that does it, uh, they're gonna have a hell of a product on their hands if they can get something similar to what Google does. Uh, correlation is even more useful, even more useful when it is uh, done in smaller chunks and smaller blocks. Like my, in my dream world, what would happen is we would be able to take the 500 keywords that, that you know, we care about for each of our websites and then compare that against, compare our individual correlations against what's happening you know, in our industry and against what's happening with Google overall. That would be, like, that would be the dream. I, I think that would be super cool. I hope, I hope someone, I hope Moz does it, but I hope someone does it. Um, I did wanna go through a couple examples. I'll try and be quick about this. Uh, correlation data can do a few things. One of them is validating things that Google has told us. So for example, when Google says things like, move your site to HTTPS, it's now a ranking signal. Yeah, we did that. If it's a ranking signal, it is like the teeniest, tiniest, most unnoticeable ranking signal I have ever heard of, which, I, let's be honest, those are the kind that Google tend to announce. They're not like, hey, we've got a big one for you, just do this. That, that doesn't really happen, right? But they'll be like, yeah, HTTPS, yeah, make your pages mobile friendly. And you get a teeny, teeny tiny boost. In fact, you can see in here that the migration cost us traffic for three months, moving to HTTPS, a lot like moving to a new website, and then it recovered and it did get a little bit better. And there's the correlation, right? Like a 0 0.04 positive correlation with rankings for being HTTPS. Uh, okay, so someone at Google tweeted, uh, if you're an SEO and you're recommending against HTTPS, you're wrong, you should feel bad. Yeah, well, if you're Google and you aren't transparent about the time that it takes to recover, you should feel bad too. And uh, you know, Dave Naylor definitely felt bad when he lost 20% of his site traffic moving to HTTPS. It takes a while to recover this traffic. So I'm not saying don't do it, do it by all means, just be aware. Teeny tiny little ranking signal. All right. Uh, Raw UL mentions I'm gonna skip through. It's a little hardcore seo -y, but you can check it out in there. I do wanna talk about this one, links and social shares. Because a lot of us do our link building, like the way we think about doing link acquisition is through social, which is, could be okay, but I don't know, right? Um, so we know that links are very powerful and influential. We know through our tests that pointing links with qualities like these and like these uh, at pages can have a very positive impact very quickly, very, very quickly. This stuff mattered a lot, like all those different factors about a link mattered a ton when we were doing manual link building. But nowadays, you know, a lot of us just let social do our links for us. So we, we partnered with a company called BuzzSumo, who have an awesome product that analyzes content. Uh, and looked at a million pieces of content that had been socially shared in their data set. Uh, you can check that, that out at the URL I shared there. And what we saw is that the, me the average number, sorry, median number of links across a million pieces of content was one. One, one link. That's just puny. It's kind of a power law distribution. It's a lot like income in the United States or real estate in San Francisco. Basically, the very wealthy get all of it um, and then everyone else gets nothing. Uh, and that holds true in content as well when it comes to social shares, when it comes to links, that's how it is. So the reality is that, you know, uh, look at that correlation. That's a, a correlation between links and social shares. You can see it's like in the 0.02 range. Pathetic. Essentially, social shares are not indicative or predictive of necessarily getting links. Frustrating. We tried segmenting this sample, still very low links, still very low correlation. Um, and that's why, like, when I give SEO advice today, as opposed to six months ago when I didn't have this information, like, I, I cannot endorse either of these. This statement, create good, unique content and Google will figure out the rest, that is wrong. Like, that is bullshit, it's a lie that Google or whoever wants to tell you or we want to tell ourselves. So too is that the best way to earn links is to create great content. That's, that's just not true. We can create great content and we can see great content 
get no links and we can see crap content get plenty of links and rank plenty well. And that's just the reality, right? So I think, you know, when I have talked in the past about this, this flywheel process where you publish stuff and you share socially and you just get links and you grow your authority and now you can rank for more terms, that doesn't work because this link part of it doesn't just happen. So big takeaways from this, like social shares, they don't necessarily lead directly to links. I think, I think we need to be aware that if you want to rank well in Google, you're gonna need some other things. You're gonna need engagement, you probably want some social, but you're definitely gonna need keyword optimization and you're still gonna need links. Um, and content that performs extremely well on social might earn links, but not, that is not the exclusive way that we can rely on, at least most of us. So with that said, you can find all the data from the study here, and you can find this presentation uh, online. And thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it.